Today, we're going to paint a chipmunk in watercolors. Let's go. Welcome back to another tutorial. So today we are painting a chipmunk. This is my first time painting a chipmunk ever or illustrating a chipmunk at all. So we'll see how this goes. I'm starting off my sketch same way I start off every sketch. I have this just average pencil here. I think this is a Derwent sketch pencil. I've had this for more years than I can even count, but it gets the job done. Really don't need a special pencil for this. Just a standard lead pencil will work. I like to put a, a sketch down and then I'll go in with a mechanical pencil and sharpen the details. For some other reason, it just, it helps me personally to have a pretty detailed drawing in place. It's kind of like the blueprint for the drawing. I might experiment with just skipping this phase altogether in the future, but for now, it kind of gets the job done. It's what I've always done. And uh, that's just part of my workflow. But this chipmunk, is affectionately called Chippy. Now I am using a reference photo here from Unsplash by James Lee. Go check out his work, some beautiful photography by James. Um, but this chipmunk is called Chippy. He lives on my front porch. Well, doesn't live, but he comes to visit and he is there all the time. He'll sit there with his little paws kind of up to his mouth and he'll just sit there for you know a few minutes at a time it took us a while to figure out that chippy was actually more than one chipmunk because yeah we thought it was one and then he would vary in shape and size and i was like okay we've got more than one chipmunk here jumping into the painting now i like to outline all my paintings first kind of start the shadows start the details that kind of just helps me if I can start out cautiously rather than just throwing a bunch of paint down. You don't normally want to throw down a bunch of paint specifically with this detailed style that I enjoy. If you do that, you're kind of going to destroy your, your depth. You'll just end up with this blob that's all one color. So you want to start kind of slowly. I like to usually outline the shadows, the shapes, the, the lines, and then you can kind of get water and you can just blend that in. And if you need to add more paint later, you can do that. But it's easier to add more paint than to take it away later. Just remember that. So I like to start with caution. And all these brush strokes, particularly on this painting, um, I'm trying to give the impression of fur. So we've got these little rows of fur here. When drawing fur, you don't have to show every single bit. You just got to have little tufts here and there. Just kind of remind the viewer that this little animal's made of fur. A nice way to kind of join that fur together is to fan it out. So the, the fur in his back and the fur in his belly are both sticking out. But to make sure you have kind of a nice little um, transition, you have this little fan. You kind of fan it out across his body. All right, so I blended that together just because I had a bunch of very harsh lines and I got some water and now we kind of added some overall color to it. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and I'm going to go in with some shadows, outline some of these darker spots on his belly, kind of color his feet in. I'm going to do another tutorial on shadows pretty soon, but shadows really do just transform your painting. If you get shadows right, man, it really will just transfer your art. And I remember when I discovered that and it's just, it's a game changer. All paintings are really just, the best paintings are composed of light and shadow. If you can master that, even without details, you already have a detailed painting. Now, his tail is pretty, pretty interesting because you don't want it to look too fluffy. Their tails are kind of fluffy, but you don't want to, it's also very thin fur, so you don't want to make it look, I mean, it's not like a, a fox tail, you know, it's, it's, it's not full. It's like a lot of very thin fur. So now I'm going to go back, add more kind of fanning, a few more little fur strokes. A little pro tip if you want to 
create that look of fur. Um, get your brush, kind of mash it in the palm of your hand, fray it out a little bit, and then you've got this nice little fur look, and then you can create some some little details with it. You could also buy a, a fan brush, but I mean, you know, now I'm working with what I've got. That's what I've always done. It works for me. Not 100% sure these are even watercolor brushes, <laughs> but it's the thing about painting. You know, some of the best art you create is it's, it's, it's art when you have no expectation. You know, you're, you're just kind of playing around. You're having fun. When you have all the best tools and the best tricks in the box, sometimes you have this expectation that you have to create a masterpiece, and it really doesn't have to be like that. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the process. That's something I have to remember because sometimes I get stressed out about it, but just have fun with it, man. All right, so I'm going in with some of these, some of these larger fur lines. This turned out a little larger than I wanted to, so I'm getting some water, blending it in, adding a little black under his eyes. Little chipmunks are just a combination of kind of that red fur, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. And you want to go in kind of cautiously. You can lay down in watercolor. You can kind of lay down a little paint and then you get the water to kind of manipulate it. And you just, like I said, you want to be cautious. You don't want to put too much down at once or there's no going back from that. Adding a little black under his eyes. I always leave the, the eyes wide open and blank. I kind of leave that for last. Um, the eyes are the window to the soul, right? And your eyes go straight to it. And these, these chipmunks have big eyes, so when you look at the painting, your eye's gonna go straight to it. Now, typically I'd put down a layer of black, let that dry, potentially put another layer down, and then I'm gonna do some nice sharp highlights to make the, the eye look nice and shiny. So I'm adding some of these, these little fur lines here those little black lines and then adding a little more a little more texture to the fur here and typically i'd let that dry i was kind of really going for it trying to make this fast i don't have a lot of time to paint so when i do paint i really have to marathon it I have a small window which i can do it i'd recommend if you're trying this that you either have a like a, a blow dryer kind of expedite that process or you just walk away, take a break, come back and let it dry in between because that'll make the paint a lot, a lot easier to work with when you're putting down another layer. All right, adding some little red details to the tail now. I'll add these little hairs and then I'll blend them in with my, uh, with my brush, give it kind of a, give it more of a tint look and you won't have these, give it kind of a red tint instead of these very, very sharp hairs. So, fun fact about Chippy, my wife put some peanut butter out for him because we read that chipmunks like peanut butter, and he did not, in fact, like it. And if he did, we didn't see him eat it, but I'm pretty sure he disappeared for like a week when we put it out there. I think it was taking up his little, his little perch there. So I went out, got rid of the, got rid of the peanut butter, and he finally came back. I apologize for my head being in the shot. It was really hard to keep that out of there. I had the camera up in such a, an area where I had to almost lean back to keep my head out of the shot, but I really like leaning in. I've always, when I when I paint, I like leaning in so I can get some of those better details. It gives me a better grip on what I'm doing. So I'm using that little technique where I fray that brush and I get those little little spiky hairs on his back. 
getting those little black lines in there too. I don't know what Chippy was eating in this photo. Imagine he's eating an acorn or a nut or something like that. But he has little paws up to his face. As a disclaimer, I do put some details in this painting that are not included in the video. Um, toward the end, I ran out of memory on my phone. I kept stopping it, or it kept stopping itself. I kept having to go in, restart it. I had to adjust the camera angle, and it threw off my angle because I'd have to take my phone down and put it back up. I kept going on my phone trying to delete old files, things I thought I didn't need anymore just to make space. And it just didn't work out, but I got the bulk of the painting included in the video. So I also got a thumb drive, so hopefully that doesn't happen again in the future. Adding some nice vivid shadows here. The reference photo had some really dark shadows under his chin, so working hard to get those right. Black and watercolor never never quite dries. It's never as vivid as you think it's going to be. You put it down and you might think it's really sharp. Well, it's going to dry as basically kind of a charcoal gray. So you either have to keep going, just keep applying layers, or... Yeah, that's probably it, honestly. Not sure there's a darker black. Getting the last of those little details in there. Chippy is just about ready to go. When you do shine in the eyes, you want to add some little splotches of white. And when it comes to watercolor, you have to really just stick your brush directly, directly in the tube of paint and lay it down pretty thickly. And when you put down that shine, it's uh, you've got to be kind of arbitrary about it. You can't do like really round reflections. So I'm going in there, just kind of outlining that eye, sharpening it up, and that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.